one bag segment. They try to, and it just ruins that run at least. And then when you were done with the WWE, was there a discussion at least eternally or with, with your family too? Hey, I want to keep doing this, but I got to figure out how to do this. Ah, because I don't know if I wanted to at the time. Hmm. Um, it was it was a huge letdown. It was it, it, it devastated me for years. It took me a while to really come to terms with the depression that I had been going through. Um, I moved out to Los Angeles. I wanted to try writing. I wanted to try acting. I wanted to try some different things. Uh, I did some production out there. Um, worked on some screenplays. Ultimately, I didn't have a ton of success, and I don't think I was the most healthy individual while I was out there. And I think I can look back on it now and realize I was depressed uh, and really struggling to come to terms with what had happened, even though at the time I didn't feel like I wanted to go back. I think that would have been easy. I think in my mind, WWE was the pinnacle of wrestling world. Um, and if I wasn't going to wrestle in WWE, I wasn't going to try to wrestle anywhere else. And so I was going to move on, try something new. Um, but ultimately, you know, I lived home for a little bit and then I moved out. And I think my family was also concerned um, the toll that it had taken on me, not just wrestling, but you know, more so the loss of wrestling. Um, and the way I handle that, and probably the way I handle a lot of things, is to become really optimistic about the next thing. Like I never, mm. never really dwell on what I have done. I, I'm always looking forward to what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't spend a whole lot of time dwelling in the past. I don't with wrestling. Um, I, I don't with any of the decisions that I made. I look at all of them as I'm here because I made those decisions, whether they're right or wrong. You know, I learned from my experiences and it, it's kind of helped me be as what I would consider for the most part, a stable individual today, you know, raising four kids. Um, you know, I, I'm responsible for 750 employees in my school district. Um, you know, I, I learned so much along the way that I never would have had I not had the bad experiences as well. Mm. Um, and I couldn't imagine the kind of person I would be if I had, if it didn't go that way. And if I had had great success, I don't think I would be. I don't think I would be who I am and I don't think I would have as much value to my family as a person if things didn't end up, if I didn't fail over and over again. You know, I look at my kids now and they fail at something and I always tell them, I mean, if failure is more important than success, you learn a lot more from failing. I mean, it's anybody can become cocky after, you know, a string of successes, but it's that failure that really teaches you what you need to change and helps you reflect on what you've done and where you're going to go. Um, that, those were all things that I learned the hard way along the way, but I, I am glad that I learned them and, um, I'm grateful, like I said, for the experience and the opportunity and, and I wouldn't change it. Of course, man. Yeah. I, I thank you so much for that advice to the world too, because I think everyone believes that once you think you've achieved everything and then it goes away, well, you think it's over, the world's over. I can't ever go forward in life, but obviously you have. And I remember years ago, I don't know where it happened. WWE.com did a, like a segment. We're like, where are they now? And suddenly you were part of the segment and it was revealed what you were doing now with your life. And now let's explain, what are you doing currently as a, as a business and as an operator and 750 employees? Well, I, I started out teaching and I really love teaching because I love history. And so when I wanted to think of a career to really just start over, um, not for money, not for, you know, fame. Those were things that I, I, you know, I had experienced and I didn't need anymore, but just for something that I enjoyed doing. Um, I became a social studies teacher. I love history, love talking to kids about history. I love working with kids. Um, and from there, um, I had continued my education with my master's degree and then my certificate of advanced study in educational leadership. I, I wanted to do something more, have a greater reach. I really enjoyed some of the more business aspects of working in a school district. Uh, so I became a prin uh, assistant principal. Um, I was an assistant principal at the high school for four years. Uh, they needed a principal at the junior high school. So I was asked if I would be willing to accept that position and I did. So that was a big decision because it's a, a lot more responsibility um, a lot more time consuming. And like I said, I had, you know, little kids at the time. Um, but I did, and we, we did a lot of work changing the culture in that building. And I think a lot of it has to do with personal relationships that you build, knowing your staff, knowing what your staff needs, supporting your staff, being able to have critical conversations with your staff, but frame it in a, in a way that doesn't make them feel defeated, but makes them feel hopeful that they can change and motivated to want to change, to win for the team, to, to look at it as the group. Uh, that's what really got me interested, in, and it was my my neck for that. That I think really, when the director of human resources role opened up, I was interested in expanding even further from 
staff in the school building to now staff in the district. So as a director of human resources, I'm part of the senior administration. Um, there are five of us now, and we each handle different elements of the school district. So obviously mine is personnel, um, anything legal, contracts, things like that. I mean, even just a lot of day-to-day -day maintenance, working with staff members, paychecks, you know, uh, insurance. Um, and so my reach now is the 750 employees and the over 3,000 kids we have in the district. Um, and at times they're the kids and their families. And it's a lot different because I really focus more on the adult end and the business end of a school district. Um, but I've, I found it really rewarding because I know if I can do my job well and I can support my staff and my people, uh, they're going to support kids. And so the more they feel supported, the more you're able to really get them to want to win for the team, um, the more that they feel that you care. Um, you know, I always said I'll do a favor. I'll do anything for my staff because I know when I ask it, they'll do it for me. And, and I think that was always true as a principal. And I think that it's true as a director. Um, but I've been enjoying it. We do this thing. Um, we had worked with our PR department on this, a guy named Alex Richmond uh, works at our BOCES, which is our consortium where all the school districts kind of work with the BOCES to access resources. And we started this program this year uh, called the Fulton School Champions. And so it's pretty well produced. It's on Facebook. I shared it. Um, I share it on my Facebook page. The district puts it out every month and we the community nominates three of our staff members and then i get to orchestrate this big surprise where we always want to catch them off guard kind of like publishers clearinghouse and we catch them off guard we present them with a prize like it's like a hundred dollar value like it's pretty it's a fairly substantial prize and then we read their nomination and why they're being recognized and that's been one of the, the greatest things it kind of gets me back into entertainment a little bit i know it's on a small scale but yeah. some of our some of our segments have reached for us i mean 17 to 19 thousand viewers um, and we're only a district of 750 staff, you know, and, and 3,000 3, students. So this is reaching outside of our school district. But as a director of human resources, which is typically kind of a, you would think of a very blah position, uh, <laughs> this has kind of given us some, you know, some razzle dazzle, so to speak, <laughs> some, some ice. And it's been an amazing experience to be able to catch these people and really acknowledge the great things that they're doing and see their reactions. We get, we love tears. We make the joke like tears are great. If you're going to cry, you know, we'll focus, you know, Alex will zoom in. Uh, <laughs> yes. But yes. it's also kind of uh, brought me back to more of an entertainment side. It's not really scripted. You're working with kids. Like you have any idea how hard it is to try to get like 50 kindergartners on the same page and, you know, like not to spoil the surprise if we're trying to like have someone sneak in the library and get them there. Um, but it's been kind of a great joining of my past and my current career. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun and we're going to do it next year. But um, it's wind right now. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? You're in a tornado? Oh, God. Please don't not. be. Hope not. Please, God, don't. But it's been it's that's what I do now. Um, you know, not only do I get to do the you know, the great entertaining things with that program that we run every month. But I also get to do a lot working with staff, working with different groups of people to just come to resolutions and make sure that everybody, again, feels supported and they can do what's best for kids. Man, that is amazing to hear. Can you give me an example of one of those surprises? Because that sounds like a, like an amazing time. Like what is one of the ones that jumps out at you is like, oh, we, we got them good at that, that time. Zoom in on those tiers. So one of the, the one of the ones we did was for our last episode in June. We have this guy. He's um, he's retired. He worked in the district for a long period of time. He's 86 years old. He's a door greeter, and he's the kind of guy at, like he could he could, he knows everybody in the building. Like we always joke, like we got to go down there and break people up and make them leave Bernie's desk because they'll just sit there for hours. And he he knows my kids. He'll he'll always ask, you know, like, hey, what's what Sammy got going on this weekend? Hey, how do you do? You know, like he's just one of the most warmest, most welcoming with students, like students in the junior high, that's where he works. He's for a district greeter, but he works at the junior high building. He basically lets people in, checks, makes sure their IDs, you know, runs them through our system, make sure they're safe to enter the building. Um, students in the building, they get reward, uh, rewards. Like if they set a goal and they meet their goal, one of the rewards is you get to spend 10 minutes with Bernie. Oh man, amazing. So we got, about 150 people after this end of the school day at the junior high. Uh, and he works at the downstairs entrance and there's a big ramp and we got 150 people to walk out the front with us, students and staff walk all the way down and line that ramp. And then we call them out 
and everybody was cheering for him and he came out and he was very emotional and we, you know, the, the cheering and the recognition for everything that he did, it was, it was personal to me because I enjoy him so much as a human being, but that was one of the more memorable ones just to see that visual. I mean, of you couldn't see past. It was a 150 swarm of people just standing there cheering for this guy um, who makes such a difference in our lives. That, that one was, it stands out because it was one of the last ones we did, but also because it was one of the most personally fulfilling for me. And it was just really cool to have, you know, that level of participation um, you know, a lot of times we get a lot of kids, we'll fill a cafeteria, we'll fill a auditorium. Um, and we, we kind of get the person in there and then we kind of do a convoluted way to just make them think they're going in there for one reason. And we get them with something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're all really cool. Uh, and like I said, you could check them out on my Facebook page or on the Fulton city school district Facebook page, but it's, it's amazing to have somebody be so moved and touched that their colleagues and the community parents local business, um, appreciate who they are and what they do. And I always read the nomination. And um, like I said, we, we spend a lot of time celebrating these people. We did a luncheon at the end of the year. We invited them all to a luncheon, and got them all together. Um, you know, so as far as what I do in my school district, that's probably the most rewarding thing. Because um, like I said, it's about kids. It's, it's about our adults being able to support kids. And it's about recognizing the hard work they do. Man, you got me. I got, we got me a little, got a little tears in my eyes a little bit because that's a great story about Bernie and, and the fact that everyone was there cheering him on. Cause I can imagine, you know, 86 years old, everyone's hooting and hollering for him, giving him his credentials and giving him a good uh, pat on the back. That's amazing to hear. Uh, you know, thank you for sharing that story as well, because that's cool what you guys are doing down there. Uh, one final question though. Do you think that you'll ever be acknowledged or brought back as a, like a guest, they have anniversary shows all the time for the WWE. Do you think that it actually ever bring you back and try to like fix the last time we saw you or you're ne you don't think you'll ever come back or have you ever received a phone call about coming back as well? I, I actually have um, just as an idea and would I be opposed to Royal Rumble? And realistically, you know, the, my response is I can never be Muhammad Hassan again. I am the director of human resources in the Fulton City School District. I can't go out there, especially after all the controversy that character got. I can't go out there and do something that could be deemed offensive or insensitive towards a group of people. And I wouldn't want to do that. I would not want to put myself in a position or, or make anybody feel like they're being disrespected. Um, and for that reason, I don't think I ever will. I don't think they want Mark Capani to come out there. They wouldn't want Muhammad Hassan to come out there. And I am no longer Muhammad Hassan, and I, I have no intention of ever returning to that character.